Hi, everybody. Welcome back from vacation. I hope everybody had a wonderful week. I was here. So, but living vicariously through you guys still. Um, so I hope everybody had a wonderful week and is now getting ready for our uh, multiple droppings of snow, depending on where you are in the state. We'll see what this week brings, but it's interesting. Just it's New England, right? We just keep on going and going and going. Just wait and it'll change. So now that you're all back and I can't find my mouse. Well, there we go. Okay, so we have a kind of a big agenda today. So um, these are our agenda items and we'll kind of work through our way through the list. So I hope everybody is ready. So USDA finally offered us this non-congregate remote learning meal waiver. Um, this waiver was accepted by the state on February 6th. So any remote learning day after February 6th that you would like to serve remote meals, um, those meals can be reimbursed as long as you're meeting the meal pattern. Um, the waiver is for non, for parent guardian pickup, meal service times. Yep, you know what they are. Um, there is a list of Q and A's and I've put the link on the bottom of the page if you want to go see any Q and A's. Um, do you need to request this waiver when you're having the event? So don't do it early, um, do it when it happens. So when they call the snow day, um, that's when you would go to Adrian's form and fill out the form that is on the link. All right. So um, who knows, you might need it this week. You might not. We'll have to see. Um, food distribution, as is every year, um, open, annual orders are going to be due on Friday the 3rd. Um, we did open them on the 17th for anybody who is in and didn't go away. Um, so those orders need to be in on Friday so that Terry can order the trucks and figure out if what she has for trucks, needs for trucks, splits with different states for trucks, um, so we can get what you want. So please um, get that done before the end of the week. Any questions can go to Terry at terryfitzgerald at maine.gov. LAC is fast approaching. So the School Nutrition Association has an annual conference, legislative annual conference every year. There is a team from Maine going, really excited to know that that's going on. Um, and they're gonna be talking about these items that are on the position paper. Um, they'll be visiting the representatives and senators from Maine um, to talk about these different topics. I encourage you to reach out to Caroline um, if you have comments or you want to share anything. Um, the legislators really love stories. Um, so it would be really awesome if you had some stories to share with them that they could share with the legislators. Um, one of the topics is to expand and offer healthy school meals for all. Um, and since we're doing it, um, any kind of feedback that you guys might have gotten would really help Caroline and the team be able to share what's going on in Maine. So I really do encourage you to reach out to her um, and share what's going on um, in your districts, especially if you have some really great stories. Kids, families really appreciating having um, meals at no charge during this tough time. And thank you for those that are going to talk and share. Um, the conference is sold out, so there's a lot of people there this year. Um, and go um, and be able to share those, what, what it's like here in Maine. 
dig into school breakfast is next week. Really lo looking forward to seeing what you do to dig in. Um, I know that people are doing some great things out there. We have that shout outs page on our Thursday update. We'd love to see some pictures. Um, if you guys are doing anything special out there for um, school breakfast week. So please share, let us know what you're doing. Love to see it. And the week after that is National CACFP Week for those that are participating in at risk after school. Um, this is a great opportunity to share that, use the, um, the week to share that information in your district uh, about what you're doing and how you're offering at risk programming through CACFP. Um, we also have proposed updates to school nutrition standards. So these have come out from FNS um, and this is a comment period. Um, so these are the proposed changes and I really do encourage you guys to make comments, to, to read about them, learn what they are, and then to make comments um, on regulations.gov. It's really easy. And this is what it looks like on the website. Um, so you'll go to red, regulations.com and then you look for this box that says child nutrition programs and you click on that box. And then to comment, you go to the yellow, under the yellow arrow is the comment button. You can comment, but if you'd like to see what other people have written, you can go to the browse posted comments and you can read through the comments that other people have made. Good, bad, or indifferent. They're all there. They're not formal. Some are formal, some aren't. Some are off the cuff. Some are from parents, some are from directors. Um, it's really important for us to get our voices heard out there. Um, so I really do encourage you to go in, check out a few comments um, and see what people are saying um, and then to make your own comment. This is the chance to make the comments heard. All comments are documented. They're each given a number, they're documented, they're compiled. Um, and then there's a summary that they use um, after the comment period has closed. Especially since they've given a couple of different options especially with like the chocolate milk, they've said, which one do you think we should do? Should we do chocolate milk just for the high school or should we do chocolate milk for the middle and high school? Like tell them what you think, you know? I highly encourage to have chocolate milk in the middle school. Um, it encourages milk drinking. Um, there was also a choice piece on a 100% um, whole grain. Um, whether we should go back to 100% whole grain or hold it at 80%. Let them know what you think. This is our chance to be heard. There's no complaining after the comment period is closed, okay? Stephanie wanted me to remind everybody, Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program, the applications will be opening up later this week and they will be due on April 28th. Uh, be sure to use your funds. We don't want to send them back to the feds. Um, try a special event or do something exotic that you haven't tried before. Um, and Thursday update will include districts who have not used 40% of their funds yet. So really that's the guide. You should probably be at least at 40% of your funds at this point in time. It's a fun, exciting program. And we hope everybody who wants to do it, applies. Um, yeah, so take advantage of the program and apply by the 28th. Those app, oh, I won't say that, just apply by the 28th. Um, triennial assessments, anybody who hasn't done their assessment for their wellness policy in the past three years, because we've had a waiver, um, those try that waiver has gone away um, and you need to have a triennial assessment on file by June of 23. So really think about that. 
see who could help you get that assessment done in your school buildings, okay? By June before you end, leave the school year. Okay, any questions about all those dates? Annual food order is Friday. Comments about the, posi the position paper to Caroline for the, by Friday. Proposed rules, April 10th, FFVP by the 28th. Triennial assessment by the end of the school year. Okay, those are all your due dates. Um, some things that are going on around the state. I was looking forward to hearing about the School Food Waste Research Project. And I had a little tab that told me who was doing it under here, but I can't get to it. So, Sebago, Orono, MSA D6, and Lisbon. There we go. Got them. Okay. Uh, they're all doing food waste research with um, UMaine, Orono. Um, so, we are excited to see what comes out of that, see what they can find out. Um, and if they can change things that are going on in their school. So looking forward to hearing about what's going on with those. Thank you guys for participating in that study. I also got a call from Matt Chin. Um, he is the manager, I guess, um, of Harvesting Good. So Harvesting Good is a processing plant that um, Good Shepherd is overseeing. Um, so this was the first year they were in operation. They built a processing plant for vegetables in Maine. So they have harvested broccoli this year and then they processed it and they froze it. And now they're selling it um, across the state. So it's called Harvesting Good. Uh, Matt did say it's native Maine has it and Cisco has it. Um, so if you wanted to purchase this, you could use your local food fund um, towards this broccoli um, and knowing that it's local. If you have any other questions, you can reach out to Matt, his phone number and his web, his email are on the screen. Um, really great way for us to be able to get local, local food when it's out of season. So exciting to see what else harvesting does good in the future. If you're still having problems with deliveries um, and they're still subbing your orders, make sure that you're documenting them. Um, if they affect your menus or your meal pattern, including vegetable subgroups, um, document it so that you have that information for the reviewers. Um, as they come around. Um, I'm not sure how bad the problem still is, um, but just document it as you go, okay? The CAFC, CACFP team has posted the at-risk list on the Thursday update. Before, be sure to check it out. There's over 30 schools on the list and you meet, may need to take some action, either sign up to participate or opt out of the program. If you have any questions, you can get in touch with Alyssa, but the list is on in one of the Thursday updates. A couple of point of service concerns as we've gone around the state um, as part of the reviews. Um, meal counting must be done at the point of service at the registers. Um, if a child is being served in a classroom, that person should be a food service worker or a trained staff member with documentation in the classroom. That child should be served and checked off in the classroom, not checked off at the register and the meal carried to them in the classroom. Um, so if you have any questions about that, please get in touch with one of us here. And also schools that are in a base year of special division two, making sure that all students need to be counted and claimed at the benefit level at their free and reduced paid levels. So just a couple of reminders there. Um, during our review of the um, special provision two data, we're finding quite a few mistakes. We wanna encourage you, please, please, please update your list regularly. 
like once a month, go in, pull your DC, get your homeless list from your liaison, any process applications and add them um, to your list. As we move forward in the next three years, your claiming procedure will be based on this year's data. So if there's anything wrong, we'll have to go back to the original data. So make sure that all your data from this year is current and correct, and that it's safe and secure. Make sure that you have it. Um, so like I said, if we come, the reviewers come, that's the data that they're gonna use to verify your counts. Any questions about that, you can reach out to David. So let's start thinking about next year. Um, all special revision two schools will be changing how they operate. Um, and you need to be talking to administration at this point um, and make sure that they know that you'll no longer be collecting free and reduced applications. If you do collect free and reduced applications, it means that you're starting all over with a new base year. So we really don't want you to see you have to start that all over again. Um, to help you out, um, all schools that are participating in special revision two in years two, three, and four, you'll be removed from the statewide online application platform so that you won't get any applications that way. We just wanna try and eliminate any points. At the end of the school year, it would be a great idea to go out to all your secretaries collect all your free reduced applications, get them out of their desks and get rid of them so that they don't have access to anything that looks like a free reduced application. Districts may send out and collect alternative income forms from the students, but this is no longer part of the National School Lunch Program, is now an unallowable cost to your program. This is the opportunity to pass this job off to somebody else in the district. Um, it's no longer part of what you do or need to do. Um, and, but to be fair to the admin, you need to share that with them um, and let them take the time and make a plan um, in order to be able to do those. And that's the same with CEP, no free and reduced apps. They can do alternate forms if they choose to. Community eligibility program. I was surprised to see how many schools did not take advantage of this program. Um, schools that are 40% or more of their students are on the direct certification list, plus any homeless or migrant from your liaison would qualify. When you qualify as a CEP school, you get to use the multiplier. Um, so you get to take all your kids and multiply them by the 1.6 and that's what you use for your free and reduced percentage. Uh, that's supposed to cover the difference, um, but that's a great way for us to leverage our federal funds in the state. Um, and you don't have to do anything for four years, no free and reduced applications for four years. So you can do that for one school, you can do it for a group of schools or you can do it for a district. So you might have a district that you want to do it at your elementary school so that you don't you don't have to use PIN numbers there anymore. You could do that as long as the group of schools, a single school, a group of schools, or a district is 40% or below, you can qualify for CEP. And that's what I just told you. Um, it all is based on your eligibility as of April 1st. Really important that you pull your master list for April 1st um, with your benefit information, with your direct cert information, so that you have that, because um, that's what you'll base your CEP on for the upcoming school year. So um, any questions about that can go to David. Um, and I am trying to put together a webinar for you guys and for business managers, along with the finance director here at the state, um, so that we can kind of do a little tag team about free and reduced applications and meal benefit applications. Um, so look for that to come out. Um, and I encourage you guys to 
sit down with your business managers or your superintendents or whoever that person is um, to hear all in one place for me um, and the director of finance. So that'd be great to have you all on board for that um, and a great way to share. So Paula, do we have any questions today? Not yet. All right. I guess everybody hasn't quite woken up from vacation yet, huh? I have to remember that I don't see my comments at the bottom <laughs> of my screen. <laughs> I have all these oh. comments written in. We're going to have a question about entitlement. Go ahead and ask your question. Yes, this is this is being recorded and it will be posted hopefully before I leave today. Okay, this is the question about the entitlement. Well, I'll try. It went up 47% from school year 22 to school year 23 and has dropped back for school year 24. I don't know. I Entitlement as in Entitlement's gone down, but participation has gone up. If that's in reference to commodities, or yes, yeah, please give Terry and send that question to Terry. She should be able to at least give you some information about that. Meal verification forms, these still need to be collected if we are running the NSLP? Yes, if you're running NSLP in a traditional form, then you need to collect free and reduced applications. If you are running special provisions in a year two, three, or four, or a CEP, then you do not need to collect free and reduced applications. No more questions coming through. No more questions. Well, you all know where to find me, jane.mclucas at maine.gov. If you have any questions, I hope you guys have a good week and make it safe. All right. Take care. Thanks for joining.